And to the woman, God said, I will greatly multiply your sorrows in the conception, your conception, giving birth, and sorrow you shall bring forth children, and your desire shall be with the, for your husband, and he shall rule over you. And unto Adam he said, Because you have hearkened unto the voice of your woman, or your wife, and eaten of the tree, of which I commanded you, saying, Do not eat it, cursed is the ground for, because of you, right? For your sake. In toil shall you eat of it all the days of your life. You've got to work to uh, get your bread, right? To get your veggies and all that sort of stuff. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, because the ground's cursed. So you have, say, like, these plants growing and then the weeds come up or these thorns trying to choke it off right that sort of thing till you return unto the ground for out of, it, out of it you are taken and dust you are so dust you will return to yeah dust to dust and the man called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all living and Yahweh made for Adam and for his wife coats of skins and clothed him and Yahweh said uh, behold the man has become as one of us he was talking to someone, probably to the other two in the triune Godhead, the Father and the Holy Spirit. He's become like us, and he knows good and evil. And now, lest he put his hand, put forth his hand and take also the tree of life and eat it and live forever. So Yahweh sent him forth from the Garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken, or from where he was taken. Okay, so he didn't have access to that tree of life anymore. So at some point, he lost his immortality if he was given that by God uh, and became mortal some time some point he would die they'd both die so God drives out the man and he places him at the east of the garden the east of the garden the cherubim and the flame of a sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life yeah. so they couldn't go back there and eat from that tree of life and live forever they messed up big time so he puts this flaming cherubim in the way so they can never go back there. But there's a plan. Uh, there'll be a time when they'll be able to go back to that tree of life. All of us. Eat of that tree of life. According to the scriptures. The story of Cain and his descendants. And the man knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain, and said, I have gotten a man with the help of Yahweh. And again, she bare his brother Abel, and Abel was keeper of the sheep, or sheep, but Cain was the tiller of the ground. And in process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground, an offering unto Yahweh, etc., etc. And you know that he killed his brother, and he was ousted from the presence of God, and out of Eden, and he went into the land of Nod, wandering. And he says, oh yeah, my punishment is greater than I can bear, God. Uh, look, uh, you have driven me out of the, from this day, this age, this era, this eon, okay? Uh, away from you, you know, that's bad enough, but even worse, I've got to put up with, you know, I've got to live for the rest of my life. Well, he says, well, the, the bad thing is, I've got to put up with, you know, the rest of my life that I killed my brother. Yeah, sure, you probably live with that, but to live without you, not be in your presence guys well that's like really harsh you know but uh, he says you know if I go into another land other people are going to find me and they're going to kill me yeah from God's face will be hid you know out of his presence he means God will still know where he is he'll still see where he is and he says uh, yeah but who whoever finds me in that other land will kill me alright so God said, no, they won't, because uh, yeah, if they do, there'll be revenge on them seven times seventy. Okay? Or well, seven times seven, whatever. Sevenfold. And Yahweh appointed a sign for Cain, lest any finding him should smite him. If they uh, kill him, well then uh, Cain will have his vengeance. There'll be, you know, vengeance will be put upon that person sevenfold. Okay? So Cain went out from the presence of Yahweh and dwelt in the land of Nod, on the east of Eden. And Cain knew his wife. He found a wife. He took a wife. And then he slept with her. And she conceived and bare Enoch. So there's no incest there. Didn't take his sister with him. All that sort of stuff. Okay. And she's right there. Cain knew his wife and she conceived. Okay. He took his wife and conceived. In the land of Nod on the east of Eden. Enoch. 
and he builded a city. He built a city and called the name of the city after the name of his son, Enoch. And unto Enoch was born Erad. And Erad begat Methuselah with Hecus Seth in here. It should be Seth. Uh, no, no, sorry. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Cain knew his wife and he conceived and bare Enoch. And he builded a city and called the name of the city after the name of his son, etc. etc. And uh, Lamech, etc. etc. And then uh, Lamech said to his wives, You know, listen up, wives. Uh, listen to what I've got to say. He, I've killed a man for wounding me and a young man for bruising me. If Cain shall be avenged sevenfold, truly Lamech. 70 and 7 fold so what it probably is hinting at there is like if someone comes therefore and kills Lamech he's pronouncing well you know uh, yeah if Cain gets his revenge for somebody killing him well I want revenge 7 times 70 or 7 fold whatever the scripture says just like Cain okay eh? And Adam knew his wife again, he slept with her again, and she gave him a son, and called his name Seth, for she said, God hath appointed me another descendant, right? Or son, or child, instead of Abel, for Cain slew him. And to Seth, to him also there was born a son, and he called his name Enosh. Then began men to call upon the name of God, or Yahweh. Okay? It's not little green aliens, or Illuminati, or... Uh, and Unaki or anything like that it was men no fallen angels none of that garbage it says there men began to call upon the name of Yahweh okay and they became the sons of God the children of God okay in the Aramaic ancient Aramaic Seth is pronounced as Sheth Shet S-H-E-T She eat something like that. And got the story of Noah. Lamech called his son's name Noah, saying, This same shall comfort us for our work and for the toil of our hands, because of the ground which Yahweh hath cursed, because of Adam's sins. And it came to pass when men began to multiply in the face of the grounds of the ground, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair, and they took them wives of all they chose. They married them, etc., procreated with them. Now these were those sons of God, these children of God, who began to call upon the name of Yahweh. They left their rightful place, turned their back on him, and intermarried, interloped, whatever. They yeah, intermarried with these unrighteous, ungodly men. Yeah? And their wives. Oh, sorry, daughters of these ungodly men. These other, yeah, worldly men, etc., because they're pretty hot, right? They were fair, and they took them wives of all that they chose. So if, maybe they had three or four wives. You know, they became bigamists or something, whatever, right? Yahweh said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever, for that he also is flesh. Okay. Yet shall his days be a hundred and twenty years. So those ones that left the rightful place, he's not going to strive with them. Okay. They're doing their thing. So he says, Well, okay. Their flesh, they're mortals, so I'm going to limit their days to 120 years, and then I've got this plan. The Nephilim were in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them. The name, the same were the mighty men which were of old, the men of now. And we actually stumbled across what in the Hebrew Nephilim actually means, or supposedly means. It means ogre. You know, like Shrek, except green. They're not green and funny like that. Uh, and don't turn into handsome men and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah, it means ogre. So this could possibly be the uh, with the interaction between human beings or men and their daughters. They crossbreed in the problems they had. They came out freaks, giants, you know, and became wild. And all this sort of stuff. There could be another option instead of like Cro Magnums or Neanderthal. Cave dwellers. Uh, 
Gathered Hunter is right in the uh, original ancient Tub Asher Aramaic. Yeah, Brita or Genesis. Yeah, you could say that. Yeah, let's look at it that way as an alternative. Okay. So yeah, them mixing with ogres, <laughs> the daughters of ogres <laughs> must be must mean um, pretty ogres. Yeah. Well, they just didn't care. <laughs> no, it says they were pretty fierce, so yeah, there must have been some attractiveness there, eh? you know. They weren't ugly as. Um, yeah, so Yahweh saw that the wickedness of man was getting great in the earth, it's getting greater and greater, right? And that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil and continually. So it's like, let's do this, it's evil, let's do this, it's evil, let's do this, it's evil. Everything they thought was basically evil. Okay, self-centered, uh, etc., etc. Oh, I want that woman. I just go kill that guy. I'll take her off him and him and him and him. Right, kill that guy, kill that guy, kill that guy. Oh, this guy looked at me wrong. I'll kill him. You know, whatever they thought was all evil, and yeah, it just got out of hand. So Yahweh said, "I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, face of the ground, both men and beast, and creeping." things and fell of the air for it is repeateth it repenteth him okay, that he had made them and mainly he was like sorrowful you know he was sad basically and he sighed oh god what the hell's going on oh, I have to stop all this madness how can I do that oh I have to destroy them all yeah probably why he killed the beasts as well because they're Use your imagination, you know, to do everything and anything, anything and everything. It was wicked, right? There was no uh, limit to what they got up to. But Noah found grace in the eyes of Yahweh, and Yahweh said unto Noah, He remembered him, right? And his righteousness, he was righteous and all that. Him and his wife and his three sons and their wives. Were, yeah. It comes out in all the house into the ark, etc., etc. Et and then the flood came, everything died. And you know the rest of the Noah story, and they all come out at the end. And the sons of Noah that went forth of the ark were Shem and Ham, and Japheth and Ham is the father of Canaan. These three were the sons of Noah, and of these was the whole earth overspread. Well, it means that whole geographical location, right? The Near East, okay? Because they probably uh, were on a flat plain of Armenia when the ark came to rest, and there was no more waters. They went down, right, and all that sort of stuff. And they stepped out. Not on top of that mountain because it's freezing cold up there. They would froze to death, etc., etc. Um, so yeah, it's actually supposedly found on the plain below these mountains, right? The remains of the ark, supposedly by Ron White, etc., etc. Uh, where what's his name? Uh, Joe Rogan says, "Well, it could have been any boat, you know. <laughs> any any boat could have got washed up there." over the centuries a number of boats you know but this guy that he talked to in the back of the backstage or whatever said no 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 it really is we found it you know all this sort of stuff some sort of a qualified expeditionist or something like that I'm trying to convince Joe Rogan that he actually found it that they actually discovered it and then Noah makes this vineyard <laughs> makes wine from these grapes and he gets wasted right goes back into his tent in the nutty lies down has a good sleep and then one of his sons walks in oh, oh damn saw your block and tackle right but he turned away he didn't cover him with anything and he went and told his brothers hey I just saw the old man you know saw his bits and pieces and they went oh, what and they went in backwards and put a cover over him right so he wakes up in the morning with a bit of a headache and he says they tell him you know what happened to you what the hell you saw all my short and curlies and you didn't do anything like cover me up or anything you stupid boy and then he cursed him okay not God didn't curse him he cursed him right he says you silly little boy you silly silly man cursed be your son you they're going to be the slaves or sorry servants of the uh, other two brothers you know your son and his sons etc etc and it goes on like that and Kush ends up with a son called Nimrod who became a mighty one in the earth all powerful maybe a king and all that sort of stuff he was a mighty hunter before Yahweh presence of God right yeah 
in the God's uh, blue skies wherefore it has it is see like Nimrod a mighty hunter before Yahweh and the beginning of his kingdom was Babel and Erech or Iraq one day Iraq well Erech at that time which became modern Iraq centuries and centuries later millennials later and Akkad and Kalni in the land of Shina out of that land he went forth into Assyria and he built Nineveh and Rehoboth Ir and Kalah and Rezin between Nineveh and Kalah the same as that great city so that's all Mesopotamia Syria okay it's not Africa or any place like that okay so it didn't all start in West Africa East Africa South Africa whatever it all started there Mesopotamia Assyria Syria right the Euphrates Tigris all around that area but keeping in mind that is, at that time it was probably just one giant landmass one giant location right there was no Germany France or anything like that no borders people just went there you know they dwelt there they become the indigenous people of that geographical location someone else comes along and says oh who are you oh we're um, the descendants of uh, Aram okay what's that language you're speaking uh, uh, this is the language of our forefather Aram who brought us here we've been here ever since oh okay i.e. the Greeks and they say okay and they give them this loan word okay so you're speaking Aramaic Aramaic right they put this in suffix so when they go home and somebody says hey where'd you go oh we invaded this geographical location and what'd you find there oh these people there were there oh yeah who are those people oh they were the descendants of Aram oh okay who's that oh their forefather okay so what did they say she says oh they spoke this language they possessed this language called of the ancestor Aram oh yeah so we called it Aramaic or Aramaic right but putting the N suffix on there and saying what well, belongs to them they're the possessor, possessors of it they're the ones who speak it right and they're sitting in that location they're ob uh, they're uh, what's that word we're looking for they're in possession of that land they're the ones dwelling there yeah so we call them Aramaeans Okay, those are the Aramaic, etc., etc. Okay, and then someone along, further along in the millennia, centuries, whatever, decides, oh, we we'll draw maps of these areas, okay, all this sort of stuff, territories, etc., etc., and we'll put on the map this name, which means in our language, whatever this geographical location was, just to say, for example, this is Egyptus. Okay, we know it's Egypt, Egypt, right? Oh, this is Persia. This is India. This is blah blah blah. Okay, so those people that created those maps named basically those geographical locations, and then eventually you get people coming in and invading, and they create borders, etc., to stop other invaders coming in, all that sort of stuff. You know, over the millennia, etc., etc. Then they become these kingdoms, okay, these civilizations that build fortifications walls all sorts moats whatever to keep more invaders from coming in right and then taking all their positions you know killing them off making carrying them off as slaves or making them slaves whatever you know and it carries on like that so then you end up in modern times with names like Germany uh, France Russia blah 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 it carries on like that right okay and now you have the after the Tower of Babel and they were scattered they all gathered uh, one place Shina or Suma in the land of Shina and they said to one another let's make bricks burn them thoroughly make a tower okay put slime on it for mortar etc let's build a city and a tower so it says here a city which is probably Babylon and a tower Tower of Babel whose top may be reached unto heaven, etc., etc., and call ourselves a name, lest we be scattered all over the face of the whole earth, or that earth geographical location that they knew of, right? That they had an idea of. Further afar, that sort of thing. Okay, so, that's where the name Babel come from, because they put this tower, supposedly God comes down to look at it, 
and says, well, they can, they'll be able to, if they can do this, they'll be able to do anything. So let's put a stop to it, cause some division, scatter them, right? We give them these new languages, three languages so they can't understand each other. Okay? And that's basically what it became, was Babel. Pass the bricks, mate. He's down up the top, an Aussie, right? To African down the bottom. Pass the bricks, mate. What? Wheat bricks? No, bricks. Oh, fruit bits. You know, so they can't understand each other. Yeah. What the hell are you saying, mate? Australians, right? He couldn't understand what the hell he was saying. And then they just scattered. Yeah. Uh, occupied different locations. And it goes on, the story of Abraham, or Abraham at the time, and all this. Basically like the biblical account, right? Your, your modern day Bible account. Okay. Just different wording. <laughs> Etc. But yeah, basically the same story, same theme. Okay. Probably just a different interpretation or translation, you know, etc. etc. The Elohimists had one, the Yahweh had one, someone else had one, right? Added to it bits and pieces, as it says, you know, the Jews probably added to it the Elohim, uh, the lowest accounts, etc. etc. Okay, so it goes through all that. It's the book of Genesis. Interesting to see what it says in the book of Exodus. Uh, it's Genesis, we're going to skip forward here. Have a look at the book of Exodus if it has it. Uh, still Genesis. Go a bit further. No, okay, we're too far. We specifically want to look at Exodus. Ah, here we go. Skip a couple of pages of here. Okay, here it says flame of fire in the midst of a bush. Uh, all this sort of stuff. Okay, um, Moses got to go to back to Pharaoh after he's called one of those overseers. He's a bit frightened there. He's making excuses. Um, and he says to God, Oh, yeah, okay, I've got to go there. And the people won't, the Israelites won't uh, listen to me, you know, because he's not a very good talker. He stutters or mumbles or something like that. Keeps making his excuses. It's, uh, eventually God says, well, I've seen your brother Aaron. Yeah, he can go with you and he can be the one uh, doing the talking and you do the performance, right? Throw down your rod and you know, all this sort of stuff. Turn it into a crocodile and all that sort of stuff. Snake, whatever. Okay, so we're trying to look at this particular verse of that in comparison to the... Um, Original ancient Tav Asherit or Aramaic or the Tav Ivri, original ancient very old Hebrew rendition. Okay, do we go? Okay, uh, okay, still uses Yahweh. We're looking for this particular verse. No. Gone too far forward, but this in this is just a, like a simplified version of it, right? Uh, nope, it doesn't have it here. Uh, it probably will just say, Well, go tell them that I, Yahweh, sent you. Uh, I'm trying to find it, make that comparison. Uh, Yeah, it doesn't have it because this is like a short version of the whole book by the looks of it. Yeah, because he sees that burning bush according to this one. Lift that bit out. I uh, hear Asher here. It lift that bit out. Okay, so it continues. 
not too sure if it does the shows the New Testament. We have a peak. Okay, Samuel. Yeah, it's probably just the Old Testament. Okay, his notes on Genesis, etc. Yahweh was the uh, page three, chapter two, four B. Yahweh was the name of the tribal god of the Hebrews. In disentang in disentangling these most ancient passages, scholars have been guided by the use of the name of Yahweh for the deity. Hence it has been called the Yahweh's Bible, which is supposed to begin in the middle of the fourth verse of second chapter. In the original story there was probably a tree of life and a tree of death. If man ate of the one he lived forever, but if he ate of the other, he lived only a few hundred years. But deceived by the serpent, he ate of the tree of death, and so he lost his immortality. Page 5, chapter 3, in regards to the serpent, the cunning subtle serpent. Among savage tribes, it was a common belief that serpents ate dust and with lizards, and beetles were immortal. In the most ancient Semitic epic, the serpent steals the life plant from Gilgamesh, while he is bathing in the brook. When he discovers he had lost his immortality, he sits down and weeps. The story of the fall is taken from an earlier savage myth that man has been robbed of his immortality by these rivals. Okay, uh, page 5, chapter 322. Least they might live forever was the sole reason apparently why they, Adam and Eve, were driven out of the garden. Page 7, chapter 4, 23-24. These verses were taken from the most ancient literary material used by the Yahwistic writer. Ah, here we go. The story of Noah. Page 7, chapter 6, verse 1. The Babylonian deluge myth, as found in the cuneiform tablets, is believed to be the origin of the biblical story of the flood. But apparently, they had cuneiform tablets in Mesopotamia, 3,000 years older, then the story of Babylon. Uh, the cuneiform tablets that were like 3,000 years older than these uh, Babylonian, Sumerian, etc. Et tablets. Okay? And the Bible stories. Okay, page 8. Xanthus was the 10th king of Babylon. In the Babylonian story, it's told by Barossus. Noah was the tenth man from Adam in the Yahwistic narration. According to Josephus, the animals went in by sevens into the ark. This uh, other person, modern uh, theologist or theologian, says, no, no, they went in two by two, or something like that. Uh, there was uncleanliness, the story of Adam, uh, Abraham. Yeah, it's got a lot of good notes here. Cush with a C was the son of Ham, Akkad, Akkadian, ancient Akkad, Shina, Babylonia. Nineveh was probably settled 3000 BC. In the ancient Sumerian language, the temple was called E Timanki, or the household foundation of heaven and earth, R. F. Harper. Uh, story of Abraham or Abraham, page 11, chapter 1128, Ur of the Chaldees. The Hebrew Yahweh was originally a Turanian deity. So where's Turania? Okay. See how it's got this IA here? It's probably something like Turain. Right? This is a end suffix. It's a Greek loan word, meaning that this was uh, this this location was uh, owned okay, by these people. These people possessed that land. They dwelt in that land. They were occupants of, of that particular region. So yeah, it's probably something like Turan. It's not actually Turanian. Greeks basically put this in suffix on the end of that word. And that's why we have the word Turanian. Okay, there's more notes here. What's this? 
the story of Jacob. It's got this thing down here, page 33, chapter 30, about Jacob. Century Bible says that the pillar of sacred stone was part of the apparatus of a sanctuary in earlier times, both in Israel and elsewhere, and was a relic of an earlier time when the stone itself was an object of worship, the abode of the deity. The black stone at Mecca continues to be worshipped by the Mohammedans. Well, they're Muslims today, aren't they? Okay, uh, page 33, chapter 30. This patriarch in marrying his cross cousins, the daughters of his mother's mother, the elder before the younger, and serving his father in law for a series of years for them, was observing the ancient customs of many tribes. That's what they did in those days, right? Okay, page 33, chapter 30, verse 14. The original Hebrew tradition with regard to the birth of Joseph is that his mother got him by eating of a mandrake but the pious editor of Genesis shocked at the intrusion of this crude boorish superstition into the patriarchal narrative drew his pen through the unedifying part of the story which traced Rachel's first pregnancy to the eating of the yellow berries replacing it by the decorous phrase God remembered Rachel and God hearkened to her and opened her womb nevertheless Though this curious piece of folklore was struck out of the text of Genesis some thousands of years ago, the popular belief in the magical virtue of the mandrake to ensure conception was by no means thereby eradicated for it has survived among the natives of Palestine to the present time, Sir James G. Fraser. It is said that even in America, roots are imported from the east and are sold among Orthodox Jews, some even paying as high as $10 for a specimen. The ancient Greeks also ascribed to the mandrake the power of exciting the passion of love. And there's lots more here. Uh, page 42, chapter 37. Gunkel considers that the stories with regard to Joseph are based on Egyptian and other foreign legends. Page 45, chapter 39. This is evidently an Egyptian tale of Anus and Bata, the two brothers, and so forth. It be really interesting to peruse. Hmm. Story of Moses. In Genesis, the writer describes the march of the patriarchs from the country of the Euphrates to that of the Nile. 400 years later, the family of the patriarch has developed into a nation, and the nation, national history may be said to be commenced in Exodus, in the book of Exodus. Josephus says the Israelites dug canals and built pyramids in cities. The Egyptians needed dough by the hand in a bowl and by the feet in the tub. Wow, this is really good. Really informative. This is chapter... 1322 the Anakim were men of abnormal stature maybe they were like 7 foot 12 foot 13 foot tall or something like that uh, wow this is really really interesting So if you found this video very interesting, you know what to do. Click on like, subscribe to our channel, add your comments below, and then go share this video with all your family, friends, and others. They may find some really interesting information in here in regards to Yahweh, in the book of Yahweh, in these notes, in notes especially. It may increase their 
understanding of biblical scripture, the history, etc. 